Hello everyone, my name is Javad Eshraqi. I'm with Purdue University, working under the supervision of Professor Pavlos Vilas. And today I'm going to talk about the interactions of a gas bubble and cavitation bubble from an energy transfer perspective. So let's get started. The final stable shape that is taken by fluid-fluid interface, when it experiences a growing instability, can be important in determining features as diverse as weather patterns, food and material processing, medical applications, the growth of cell structures and viruses, and the dynamics of planets and stars. All such perturbations go from instabilities and have a tendency to chaotic behavior. How this process results in the choice of a final stable shape is the key to the development and final form of a wide range of biologically important structures. An example that is accessible to the laboratory study is that of an air bubble driven by an acoustic field when it becomes shape unstable through a parametric instability. In this work, for the first time, we investigate the interactions of an air bubble with a cavitation-induced acoustic field to find a parameter that controls the final shape taken by the fluid-fluid interface. To study the interactions of a single air bubble with an acoustic field induced by a cavitation bubble, we inject air bubbles of five different sizes at the bottom of an acrylic container filled with distilled water. On the left, we can see a schematic of our experimental setup. To control the acoustic field intensity, the cavitation bubbles are generated on top of the air bubbles at the center of the container using a laser at three different laser powers. We record the dynamics of both cavitation and air bubbles using a high-speed camera. The far field pressure is also recorded using two hydrophones. We also vary the relative distance between the bubbles by delaying the cavitation inception using a photodiode detector. The table on the right shows the ranges of each parameter. Once the cavitation bubble is generated, the air bubble starts oscillating in volume oscillation regime. The volume oscillation means the radial expansion and contractions of the bubble without varying its shape. As soon as the incident acoustic wave is sufficiently intense, the oscillating surface of the air bubble becomes unstable due to the forcing of large amplitude volume oscillations, which leads to the onset of shape oscillation. In these videos, we show the effects of air bubble size and relative distance between the bubbles on the air bubble oscillation regime. We observe four different oscillation regimes, volume oscillation, single mode shape oscillation, multi-mode shape oscillation, and breakup. This video indicates when the air bubbles are closer to the acoustic source, it's more likely to oscillate in shape. Also, at the same distance from the acoustic source, the larger bubble has less intense oscillations. So, we hypothesize that the absorbed energy by the gas bubble controls the oscillation regime. Before we test our hypothesis, we need to develop a robust way of oscillation regime determination and a method to find the absorbed energy by the bubble. Currently, there is no single approach that can define different oscillation regimes autonomously. Here, we propose a frequency-based approach to define different oscillation regimes. In this approach, the air bubble volume variation over time signal obtained from the high-speed imaging is analyzed with the continuous wavelet transform to find the dominant frequency of size variations over time. Next, the air bubble boundary at each time instant is transformed into R theta coordinate, and the obtained signal is denoised, and the dominant wave number is determined. Hence, the time history of the dominant wave number of air bubble boundary is obtained. Lastly, the air bubble oscillation modes are achieved by plotting the time history of the bubble boundary wave number against the dominant frequency of size variations over time. With this, we can define that the air bubble undergoes volume oscillation regime if we observe one mode. If exactly two modes are observed in the map, the final oscillation regime that the air bubble undergoes is single mode shape oscillation. And if the map shows multiple modes of oscillation, the bubble final oscillation regimes is multi-mode shape oscillation. Moreover, in more intense acoustic fields, and when the air bubble is closer to the acoustic source, the air bubble may break into single or multiple tiny bubbles while undergoing multi-mode shape oscillation. Hence, we define a new regime as a breakup for such cases. This regime is automatically detected during the image processing when we observe more than one bubble in any of the frames. Now that we robustly define the oscillation regimes, we develop a framework for quantifying the absorbed energy by the gas bubble. So, in the absence of the air bubble, B 
we can quantify the induced energy by the cavitation bubble using the hydrophone signal. However, when the air bubble is injected into the container, part of the induced energy by the cavitation bubble is absorbed by the air bubble. So we define the discrepancy between the pressure signal's energy in the presence and absence of the air bubble as the absorbed energy. We can measure the pressure signal energy in the presence of the air bubble using the hydrophone data. But what about the energy of the signal in the absence of the air bubble? So for this, we use the data simulation approach and predict the far field pressure induced by the cavitation model. This method fuses the experimental measurements with the existing models to overcome the modeling underlying assumptions and increases the accuracy. So as you see, the data simulated modeling most accurately predict the bubble size variation and far field pressure at the location of hydrophones. Now, you can estimate the absorbed energy by comparing the hydrophone signal energy and the predicted signal energy by the assimilated model. The solid black line represents the hydrophone reading in the presence of the air bubble, and the dashed blue line shows the predicted pressure energy in the absence of the air bubble. Now we can jump to our results section. We conducted a parameter study by varying the air bubble size, cavitation generation delay, and laser power thus elucidating the influence of cavitation energy, relative distance, and bond number on the air bubble final oscillation regime. This plot here illustrates the air bubble oscillation regime's map based on the induced cavitation energy and a modified bond number that includes the distance between the air bubble and cavitation bubble. At high bond number, the air bubble is stiffer. That means the air bubble needs more energy for the formation and transition to another oscillation regime. Also, the air bubble is further from the acoustic source, hence the excitation energy at the air bubble location is not high enough to cause a transition to shape oscillation. In contrary, at low bond number, the air bubble is smaller and closer to the cavitation nucleation site. Thus, the induced energy yields to the breakup of the air bubble. In these two extremes, cavitation energy has the least impact on the oscillation regimes. However, in moderate modified bond number, the air bubble oscillation regime transitions from volume oscillation to single mode shape oscillation to multi mode shape oscillation and to finally break up as cavitation energy increases. For the shape oscillation, our observations show that the transition from volume oscillation to shape oscillation is a function of cavitation energy, relative distance between the bubbles, and the air bubble size. Hence, we hypothesize that the acoustic energy absorbed by the air bubble controls the ripples on set on the air bubble surface. To investigate this, we first conduct a scaling analysis on the rayleigh plesser equation and non-dimensionalize the absorbed energy and the shape oscillation on set time. And then we plot the non-dimensionalized ripples on set time versus dimensionless absorbed energy. This plot shows a linear relationship in log-log scale between the dimensionless absorbed energy and shape oscillation on set time. The results demonstrate that the more energy absorbed by the air bubble, the sooner the ripples appear on the bubble surface. In addition, such bubbles are more likely to break into tiny bubbles. It also indicates the feasibility of employing the non-dimensionalized absorbed energy to define transition thresholds between different oscillation regimes. The two plots that we reviewed earlier imply that the local acoustic intensity and air bubble size are determinant factors in the energy absorption of air bubbles. Hence, to measure the ability of air bubbles with different sizes for energy absorption, we redefine the Weber number based on the acoustic intensity in terms of the induced pressure at the air bubble location. In this plot, we illustrate the correlation of dimensionless absorbed energy with Weber number that indicates the increasing of the air bubble energy absorption with Weber number. And most importantly, it shows the modified Weber number can also determine the critical thresholds for oscillation regime transitions. In the end, let me quickly review the highlights of my presentation. We have studied the interactions of a gas bubble and cavitation bubble experimentally. The frequency-based analysis of an air bubble oscillating in a cavitation-induced acoustic field revealed that different regimes could be defined robustly based on the wave number of the air bubble boundary. It was shown that the transition between different regimes was controlled by the air bubble absorbed energy. It was also shown that the absorbed energy was a linear function of Weber number defined based on the induced acoustic pressure in a log-log scale. With this, 
I come to the end of my presentation and I would like to thank you all for watching my talk.